and we're back on the Roger Hughes Show. And the Stetson Hatters have opened up this season with a record of one and two, defeating Warner on the road in the opener before dropping two home decisions, one to Florida Tech and one to Mercer just this past Saturday. However, Coach, when you look behind the numbers, it's more than just a score. And you can definitely see some positives, even in two losses. Well, absolutely. Well, the, the first, uh, I'll choose to talk about the victory first, and that mm-hmm. was our first road game uh, in the history of the program since we brought it back. And so that was something, kind of a monkey to get off our back, so to speak, being able to go down, win in a hostile environment, and, and win convincingly. Um, we came back home and we knew that this run was going to be very difficult. Uh, we're playing two schools uh, that have athletic scholarships and, and, and so we want to stretch. We want to, we want to be able to play teams uh, with as good a competition level as we can because I think that's going to make us better down the road. And you're right that while the scores uh, are pretty lopsided, uh, there are a number of bright spots within them that we can build on I think as we get into the conference play. Well, that's just it. It's in, in the Stetson Hatters right now, taking on Florida Tech, taking on Mercer, and of course this weekend against Birmingham Southern. They're non-conference opponents. They are scholarship programs. So once you get into the Pioneer League schedule against the likes of Drake and Butler and whatnot, then you're looking at more eye-to-eye type of athletes mm-hmm. than as the case with Florida Tech and with Mercer, which has a scholarship. Well, well, there's 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 good and bad. Uh, you're right, we can look forward to getting back in a conference play where, where the, the playing field is a little more level, so to speak. But with that said, you know, we, we didn't play well enough in those two games consistently. Uh, I, I'm not sure that, that our program is um, indicative of what the score was. Uh, there were some bright spots, like I say, but we, we, in each game we dug ourselves big holes to start with. And, and emotionally it's hard to stay in the game. And I think one of the things that was great to see was that emotion didn't come over our team. Even though we were down uh, three or four scores, uh, our guys were into it, our guys were fighting hard, and, and we're starting to get closer to that goal of playing the full 60 minutes of a game. One of the biggest bright spots of the year came in the opener against Warner with the special teams play. Mm-hmm. You did block three kicks, Donald Payne scooped one up and returned it for a touchdown. So special teams got off to a big start in the victory. That's and, a big key. And that's something we emphasize a lot and it's something we have to be good in. Uh, until we get the, the manpower up front on both sides of the ball as our, as our offensive and defensive line develop, uh, we're going to have to get short fields via the special teams. We're going to have to make sure that we give the other opponent uh, long fields to go down to help our defense out. And in that first game, it just clicked. I've never been part of a, of a win where we block three punts and an extra point. And, uh, and so uh, we're very pleased with that effort. Now, of course, you came back into Spec Martin Stadium and dropped a home decision to Florida Tech, and you and I both felt the team came out a little bit flat, Mm -hmm. and we were both surprised about that. And when we had that conversation, I I remember thinking, when you see the players come out, you're thinking home opener, you're thinking these guys are going to be jacked. And as a matter of fact, they came out a little bit flat. Why do you think that was? I I wish I could put my finger on it. I think, uh, you know, uh, I don't like to make excuses. I think possibly the fact there's a major monsoon just as we're warming up, and and that may have taken a little bit of the the crowd out of it. I know from the standpoint, we didn't have as many people in the stands pregame as we normally do. And and, and listen, that's like a 12th man for us. When that that stadium is packed and it's rocking and people are getting into it, our guys feel that excitement and, and kind of feed off that energy. And, um, you know, I should have had them better prepared, bottom line. We should have, we should have been um, uh, sky high coming to that first one, and, and we were a little bit flat. And, uh, and, and it was one of those things where we didn't really know what to expect. It was, it was uh, FIT's first game. We had no film from this year. We had some from last year. But they were a much different team this year from a personnel standpoint as they'd had some transfers come in. And so I think part of it was just kind of facing the unknown a little bit. Uh, and, and, and part of that was, I think, the weather, and, and we, just, we just didn't come out and play with a lot of intensity and emotion. And then came Mercer this past Saturday. You had to face John Russ, who was the PFL Freshman of the Year last year, sophomore quarterback for Mercer, really an outstanding quarterback. And there were some positives in that Mercer game, mm-hmm. and I actually came away very, very encouraged from watching the sensational 17-play, 84-yard drive that ate up 826. How to talk a little bit about the mindset as Tentler started to lead the team down the field from deep in your own territory. What was your thinking as that drive started? Well, one thing I want to make sure that we impress upon people is if the standard for excellence is anything less than um, winning, th- then, then we're not going to get to where we want to go. With that said, you're right, that, that drive, actually we'd had spots of that type of drive. I thought our plan was very, uh, was very good, and I thought that uh, 
Uh, had we executed with, we had a few drop balls that stopped drives earlier. We had a couple stupid penalties that had stopped drives earlier. And, and on this particular drive you're talking about, it took about eight minutes off the clock, and, and we were able to drive at 85 yards. We weren't able to finish, and, and certainly that's not good enough. But with that said, you know, it, it's, it's getting better as the season goes along, and that's certainly one of our goals. Well, you did see some good running on that drive. You saw Ryan Tentler with some pinpoint mid-range passes mm -hmm. and some critical third down conversions. You get down inside the uh, red zone, you get it all the way to the two yard line, take us back to that fourth and two play, the fourth and goal, where you, you, you call that, uh, that read play, mm -hmm. take us back to that timeout. Well, actually, uh, I'll, go back, I'll go back to the third and two. And, and we had put in a special play on the goal line for the type of defense we were going to get. And, and essentially executed it pretty well. Our back saw a flash of, of, uh, of Jersey and, and made a cut that possibly he, he could have kept outside a little bit more. And, and then we probably would have scored on the third down. We called timeout, uh, trying to figure out if we want to go for a field goal or go for a touchdown. We decided to go for the touchdown. We called an option play. And, and again, uh, I've always told our quarterbacks, if you can get one yard down there, uh, we want to take that. But uh, in this case, he cut it up just a little bit too fast. And again, not blaming anything. We just have to execute better on the goal line. Mm -hmm. um, and how we do that, we go into halftime at 28-7, uh, and that feels a lot different than 35 to nothing. No doubt about it. It was a minute 20 left on the clock when that drive came up empty, and it was a great job by Mercer. Give him credit. John Russ, pinpoint passing, mm -hmm. got him right down the field, and they scored. And it sort of exposed a little bit of the defensive issues that we're having. However, if you look at the game as a whole, the defense held Mercer to 5 of 15 on third down. And that's really all about. That's not bad. 33% mm -hmm. third down conversion rate for the opponent is pretty darn good. Well, it's, it's, it's outstanding. And, and we've been a very strong team when it comes to third down efficiency on defense. The trouble is we haven't been able to get them to third down. And so that's been a big point of emphasis in our coaching over these first three weeks and will continue to be is, you know, we got to be on schedule defensively, make sure that we hold them to under four yards on first down so we can set up a third down. Because uh, we're, we're pretty pleased with our secondary overall, even though we, we did give up a couple of long passes through a breakdown. Uh, we've got to make sure that we get them in a situation where we can get the ball back, and that has to get them to third down. Well, one player on that defense and that secondary that has, of course, made the biggest impact here in the land and at Stetson University is Donald Payne, the Payne train, number seven. We'll take a look at him when we come back.